As introduced, my name is Sangmin Lee, a representative from the Democratic Party of Korea. My senior lawmakers who are gathered here and experts, as well as congressmen and women from the US and South Korea, I am honored to be with you today. I really think this is a huge honor for my family even. I'd really like to emphasize this fact. Uh, let me be very brief and to the point in my talks. Since the diplomatic landscape surrounding Korea is very complicated and changing rapidly, we actually on the Korean Peninsula are in a constant state of crisis, but that has even been complicated further and resolving this issue will require the wisdom of the international community and the Korean Peninsula as well as common efforts. I am uh, still part of the ruling party, but with the transition of power in Korea, I will be part of the opposition party. And when our candidate uh, lost the election, uh, Yes, I start to feel the bitterness, so to speak, because now I'm transitioning from the ruling party to the opposition party. So I think this period can be a period of reflection for myself. So this actually on the Korean Peninsula, there might be slight differences between the conservative party and progressive party. However, I think the common goal on the Korean Peninsula toward peace has always been the same. And I believe over the past government, there might be some conflicting views between different parties. And when we assess the achievements of the Moon Jae-in administration over the past five years, when I attended a television show, uh, one uh, audience from the op opposition side asked me to cite one achievement of the Moon Jae-in administration. So I said that his administration was able to relieve the risk of war on the Korean Peninsula, and he made a lot of efforts to do so. To be sure, we weren't able to resolve the inter-Korean issues completely and achieve unification. However, the Moon Jae-in administration indeed made a lot of efforts toward that direction. And at his inauguration, President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un even threatened to uh, press the nuclear button. And a lot of worries over a nuclear war were permanent, not only among the North Korean residents, but also people around the world. However, President Moon Jae-in was able to hold three rounds of uh, talks, summits with North Korea, and there was a US DPRK summit held as well. I think we came a long way. To be sure, unexpected provocations have held us back and have offset some of our progress. However, we shouldn't be frustrated because of such setbacks because we have faced a lot of setbacks and frustrations at uh, so far. However, every time we face such setbacks, we have gather together and overcome such setbacks. So I think this is a process. So when we talk about the Korean Peninsula policy of the Moon Jae-in administration and his foreign affair policies, I believe there would be some achievements as well as some setbacks. And as the Yoon suk administration will take office soon, I think there, I'm worried there could be a discontinuation between the administrations, but I hope this new administration will not make such a mistake. 
Moon Jae-in administration, Moon Jae-in administration's uh, past policies might need some improvement. So I hope the new administration can uh, reserve such uh, issues. And by doing so, we can achieve a free and unified Korea Peninsula. The Korean Peninsula issue is not limited to the North and the South. It is a global issue, but it is also a critical issue at home here in Korea in terms of ideology and political preferences. This issue has caused divide on the Korean Peninsula and such divide will hinder us from achieving peace and no matter how many efforts we make in terms of the us ROK alliance and the inter-Korean relations, such divide will uh, prevent us from achieving an ultimate unification. Therefore, I believe that the complicated issues regarding the East Northeast Asia and the Korean Peninsula should be reserved together by gathering our wisdoms together. And President-elect Yoon suk yeol said that there should be complete uh, measures for complete denuclearization by North Korea. And I think that each a reasonable message in principle and that is a strong message toward North Korea. However, even though that is a principle, in practice, we need to work for mutual prosperity and peace on the Korean Peninsula by proactively making efforts in resolving the inter-Korean issue because South Korea uh, has more national strengths than North Korea. And also in terms of our uh, social system, I think the we have passed the time for confrontation between the North and the South. Therefore, for the sake of our nation and for the, also for the sake of the Korean Peninsula, I think we need to make sure that the Korean government takes a more leading role in creating the conditions to resolve the inter-Korean relations. And when those conditions, let me correct, we shouldn't wait for such conditions to be built by itself. We should take the initiative to condition, create such conditions by ourselves. To be sure, the Yoon Suk-yeol administration is a conservative administration and they are based on the conservative views. So they will uh, need to persuade their supporters in this regard. The Kim Dae-jung administration Nomuyan administration or other past administrations. Could be assessed in the similar way. I think reflecting the views of the supporters is important, but at the same time, building the consensus. and asking for support from the supporters is very critical. I think the polarization has become a critical issue in South Korea, especially these days. There are several issues that look like they lack solutions. However, I don't think we do not have a solution especially for the uh, prosecutor's right issue in South Korea. I believe there is uh, some consensus that can be made. However, we are sometimes too fixated on a small difference between us and disregard all the similarities that we have. I think we need to be able to build consensus and persuade our supporters to build such consensus with the opposition side. Therefore, I would like to highlight the fact that uh, the past government, especially Moon Jae-in administration, 
were not so successful in persuading their supporters. They were sometimes uh, kind of swayed by their supporters, which hindered the building the unity in Korea. So that is why we need unity and cooperation in the new administration. And the presidential election research showed that Yoon suk administration won the election by a narrow margin. This means only 47 or 48 percent of the entire voters supported this administration. In other words, both sides didn't have all of the supporters. Even though a winner won only 78 percent of the voters, they are able to win the election because of the political system. Therefore, I think uh, the winner, even winner needs to be aware of this situation and realize that without the supporter of the opposition side, we cannot uh, carry out important tasks for the state. We need to recognize uh, that the presence of the opposition side is essential in carrying out national tasks. So I hope the Yoon suk administration can see the opposition party as a partner for his administration. And I think uh, whether he can successfully do that will determine the success of his administration without getting support from the opposition party, I don't think he will be able to uh, successfully carry out his policies. And this will not be beneficial to the both ruling and opposition parties. Actually, under the constitution of the ROK, the president had a lot of authorities. So I believe uh, the leadership of the authority of the president to build unity in the National Assembly is very critical. So we need to gather wisdoms to build unity. And right after the election ended, I hope uh, that it would, been, it would have been better if President elect Yoon suk yeol also made a visit to the leadership of the Democratic People's Party and asked for cooperation. I hope he could have uh, asked for more cooperation from the Pe Democratic People's Korea. I hope, at least hope, that uh, he can uh, make efforts in that sense going forward. To be sure, the Yoon suk administration will uh, be guided by its own principles, but I hope that uh, some of the legacy of the Moon Jae-in administration can be adopted as needed. And there is another point that I want to make in addition to the security issue. Peace and co-prosperity of the Korean Peninsula are important, but I think Korea also has an obligation to exercise a leadership on the global stage as a central country. It is well positioned to do so now. I think this issue goes beyond the Korean Peninsula issue. People living in the ROK are now a member of the central city on the global stage. So they are obliged to reserve the issues faced by humanity. And that is why not only conventional security issues, but also energy, virus, polarization, poverty, and other non-conventional security challenges such as providing development aid to the developing nations are also important. Also, with the development of digital civilization, there is a lot of divide. 
So resolving such current issues and global issues are the task we need to tackle now. Plus, we need to further evolve our civilization and just as our past generations left behind this civilization, we also have the obligation to do so to our future generations. Last year, on his visit to the US, President Moon Jae-in talked about a lot of issues such as the launch of the space aircraft and was able to lift many limitations or restrictions on them. And I think we built the conditions for South Korea to play a leading role on the global stage now. So we shouldn't just focus on the Korean Peninsula issue or Northeast Asia. We should broaden our perspective. And in doing so, the friendship between the US and ROK should be deepened. And actually, politicians need to play a re leading role in that area. However, when you look around the world, usually government authorities such as the president uh, take the central role in doing so rather than lawmakers. In, in that case, when the government changes, the attitudes or policies tend to change, whether that is the change of government in the US or South Korea. So as we are gathered with a lot of lawmakers from the US and South Korea, whether you are senior uh, lawmakers experienced in a lot of areas or whether you are young lawmakers, I hope we can make efforts to build the networks of the representatives and lawmakers around the world, thereby further solidifying our US-ROK alliance. Thank you for listening.